Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you my best tips and tools to inspire you to create beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am back with five Dollar Tree spring DIYs for you that don't take a lot of time, don't cost a lot of money, but look really, really awesome. So with all that being said, let's get crafting. For today's first DIY, we're gonna make this potted lavender hanging sign using one of these beaded hanging signs from Dollar Tree, some florals of your choice, and some of these seed starter pots and some paint. So what I'm gonna do here, and you could just paint right over this or you could put paper over it, but I decided I was going to remove the paper that was on these little decorative edged panels, I guess I'll call them. So I peeled off what I could and then I took it downstairs and sanded off the rest with my electric sander. Now I'm just using some painter's tape to cover over the beads. I'm gonna leave all the beads just the natural color that they are, but I do want to paint my three panels. So just taking the time there to cover up those beads. Next, I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in the color white, and I'm just going to paint over each of these panels. I'm pretty sure I only needed one coat because this paint is pretty thick. If you're using regular acrylic paint, you might need a couple of coats. Next, I'm gonna take two of these like recycled paper um, seed starting pots. These are from Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna paint two of them with my Waverly chalk paint in the color moss. Of course, you could do whatever colors you choose for your project. This is just the color that I chose to go with my florals. Once my panels here are dry, I am just gonna sand those lightly so that they are nice and smooth. Sometimes the thicker paint does leave some ridges or brush strokes. So just sanding those lightly with my little sander and some 400 grit sandpaper. The next thing I'm gonna do is take my Tim Holtz Distressing Ink and I'm just gonna go around the edges with this vintage photo color. This of course is an optional step if you're wanting to give kind of an older worn look to your project. Now coming back to our pots, I am going to cut them in half so that we can have, we're gonna end up with three half pots and we're gonna be able to then glue them flatly to the panels here. So I will have one half that I'm not going to use, but just go ahead and cut them. They should be pretty easy to cut with pretty much any scissors. And you can see there, I'm just finding the ones that are most evenly cut in half, and then we're going to place them on our panels. So just using some hot glue, I'm trying to just go around the edges there, and then press it down onto the panel all the way at the bottom edge. Next, I'm going to glue just a small piece of floral foam right in the center inside each of the pots so that we have something to anchor our florals to. Now I'm choosing to use this lavender, I believe these were from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just cutting the individual little pieces and poking them down into the floral foam. Thank you. 
And here's our finished project. I just love being able to take this sign from Dollar Tree and a few other items and make this gorgeous piece. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I'm so glad that you found me. I hope you'll enjoy what you see and you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. I hope everyone will tap that bell, check and make sure your notifications are set to all so YouTube will let you know when I go live on my channel or upload a new video. For DIY number two, we are gonna make a really cute little sign and some jute twine flowers. We're gonna use this sign from Dollar Tree and some of this wired jute cord a couple buttons and some regular jute twine. So I'm going to just tape off the edges of this sign. I wanted to give the back of my sign a different color. So I'm taping it off and then we're going to color it with pool blue. Now to make each of our jute twine flowers, we need five pieces of twine that are three inches long and five pieces that are four inches long. So here you can see I'm cutting my three inch pieces and then we'll measure the four inches and cut those as well. Now this part can get a little messy, so I would definitely use a cool temperature, a low temperature hot glue gun if you have one. And the first thing we're gonna do is take our three inch pieces, one at a time, and we're gonna loop it around. And then we're taking a four inch piece, gluing it at the bottom as well. And when you loop it around to glue it at the other side, you're gonna see that it's going to kind of make a petal here that has the smaller twine on the inside and the larger one going around the outside. So you're gonna make five of these petals for each of your flowers. Then I'm just taking a one inch hole punch and I'm just punching out a circle from some cardstock. And now we're going to glue our five petals around this circle. You could definitely just cut out um, a circle. You don't need the hole punch for that because it's going to be covered up anyway. So you can see I'm just kind of evenly spacing out my five petals here that we made out of the jute twine. Next, I'm gonna take the jute twine that has wire inside and I'm going to wrap it around, making it in a spiral until I have it as big as I need for the center of my flower. I want it to be big enough to cover up the white cardstock and then we're just gonna glue it down. If you have any places where the jute twine is trying to um, come off of the wire, just add a little bit of extra glue. And then I'm gonna put a dot of glue in the middle of that and add a little white button. These are so cute. So I made two for my project. Then I'm gonna take a couple more pieces of the jute twine wire and we're gonna make stems for our flowers. Every time you cut this, it's the twine is going to try to fray. So be very careful and um, add a little glue on the end to keep the twine on the wire. Then I'm just kind of bending it into a fun shape for the stem. We'll glue that down to the sign and then we'll glue the flower on top.
Next, I'm going to pry up one of the staples on the back holding the beaded hanger on. And you could either take these beads off and paint them and put them back on. I'm actually going to take them off and just add some beads that I already have that are painted. So I took off the plain ones and I'm just adding white. And then we'll press that staple back into the hole and then add one more thing to the front of our sign. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of hot glue at the very bottom of our sign and then just put some of this moss down here just to add a little bit of grass to our project. And here's our finished project. I just love the look of these jute twine flowers. For a complete list of all the tools and supplies I used in today's projects, open up the description box below the title of this video. There you will find links for my Magnolia Design Co. website, my Amazon storefront, and a list for each of these projects of the tools and supplies that I used. For DIY number three, we're gonna use a couple wood items from Dollar Tree and make this little fence flower box. I also have this printable and we're gonna use some cubes or some little finials. So the first thing I'm gonna do with this little hanging fence sign is I'm gonna remove the hanger from the back and this is the kind of crate that I was able to find but you could use any type of crate from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to paint my crate and my fence white. Now this card that I'm going to put on the front of my crate was actually with a scrapbooking kit. Um, you can use sticker letters to put flower market or whatever you'd like the front of your crate to say. I'm just trimming this down now to fit the front of my crate. Once I get that cut down, I'll use some Mod Podge to glue that to the front of the box. Then we're gonna put a little bit more Mod Podge on the front and just seal down our paper. Next, I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue to the bottom of this fence piece and we're gonna glue this onto the back of our crate. Once this paper's dry, I'm gonna take my little sander and in a downward motion, I'm just going to clean up the edges in case my paper was hanging off. Next, I'm gonna take four of these little feet. You can also use the little cubes from Dollar Tree. These are little dowel caps and I'm putting them on the end of my paintbrush just because it's easier to paint it when it's not moving around. I'm gonna paint these for black and we're gonna use these as feet for our crate. Again, like I said, if you don't have these or don't wanna buy them, you can always get those small wood craft cubes from Dollar Tree and use them instead. 
Now these are some little half beads that I already had from, I believe, Amazon. I just added three of these to the top of my fence, totally an optional step. I had them and they were already painted black, so I decided to go ahead and use three of them. Next, I'm gonna flip my little crate over onto this jar and I'm gonna glue my four feet onto the four corners of the bottom of our crate. Next, I'm gonna cut a couple pieces of floral foam to glue into the bottom of our crate. And this will be glued down so that it doesn't move around as we add our florals. So two small pieces, we'll glue them in and then we'll add some moss on top of that. And then we'll be able to add our flowers. And our last step then is to just cut small pieces of florals, whichever ones you'd like, and add those into our crate, poking them down into the floral foam. And here's my finished project. I probably could have made the flowers a little bit shorter so that you could see more of the fence, but I love how this turned out. For DIY number four, we're gonna take this muffin tin and some other small springy items and make a little display, kind of like a shadow box, I would say. So I'm gonna first take this very shiny muffin tin and I'm going to spray paint it with some gunmetal and then once that was dry, I'm gonna dry brush some white chalk paint all over it to give it more of an older, distressed look. And I want to make this lighter just for some fun spring colors to be able to um, really show with that white in the background. So you can see I'm not completely covering with the paint, just um, mostly. Once that's dry, I'm gonna take some Scrabble letters and I'm hot gluing these to the edge. I'm just putting them kind of back and forth to spell the word spring. You could do springtime, you could do birds, um, any word that you want. I just thought this would be fun to kind of add these on here to add a little word. Now I'm also gonna take some of this same moss that we've been using in this video and just put a little bit of it in a few of the cups. We're gonna add some foam eggs. We're gonna use this little nest and bird. Now they are from Michael's, I believe. Um, but sometimes I can find birds at my Dollar Tree as well. So we're just gonna add a bunch of little springy things into this muffin tin and then we'll add a hanger so that it can hang on the wall. I'm also gonna use one of these small little wood bunnies. We're gonna use a little butterfly, some of these foam eggs, and just make this a really cute little display. Just use what you have on hand, look around, see what springy things you have. We'll use also a little bit of some spring florals as well. Thank you. 
This muffin tin had a hole at the top and the bottom, so I'm just putting a piece of black and white gingham ribbon from Dollar Tree through there, and then I'm going to give it a knot. This would be a great way to be able to hang this. You could also use string or whatever you'd like. I'm also going to make a bow with this same ribbon and glue that right at the base of the hanger. And we'll just add a couple little pieces of florals just to finish off our project. And I love this. I think it would be so fun to make something like this for each of the seasons. If you love budget home decor DIY videos like this, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and leaving a comment or two. That lets YouTube know people are enjoying my content and then they'll show it to more and more viewers. For DIY number five, we're gonna make this wood sign using some of these metal flowers. Now, I wanted to use the big ones that come on stakes from Dollar Tree, but I couldn't find any, so I did find this sign that I'm gonna cut the flowers off of. Taking four five gallon paint sticks, I'm gonna lay them next to each other, and then I'm just gonna measure how long I need to cut three pieces that I'm gonna use to glue the four tall ones together. So using my miter box and saw, I'm just gonna cut those three smaller pieces. Then taking my Waverly Antique Wax and a baby wipe, I'm going to stain my four long pieces and my three smaller pieces. Next, coming to my sign that I did find at a thrift store, I'm gonna remove just the three flowers. So I'm gonna to try to bend the wire there and cut just the flowers off. Again, hopefully your Dollar Tree has some of the larger metal flowers that are on stakes, like you can put them in your yard. That's originally what I wanted to use for this. If they do, you're gonna to want to make your sign a little bit bigger so that your flowers will fit. So what I'm gonna do, I've got those metal flowers now. I'm going to paint each one a different color. Since the petals are kind of in two layers, I'm gonna flip the top layer up so that I can paint the bottom layer of petals and then we'll paint the top layer as well. So I had one of these hanging metal back buckets from Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna cut the handle off, but if you don't have one of these, you could definitely take one of their plastic pots, any type of pot, and cut it so that it's flat and kind of like we did with the little seed starting pots in DIY number one. Just make something at the bottom that your flowers can be coming out of. Now I'm taking these three small pieces and two of them I'm gonna glue to the front across the four tall pieces. This is gonna hold them together. The third piece I'm gonna end up putting on the back of the project just as an extra support also on the back to hold the pieces together. I decided I didn't like how shiny this metal bucket was, so I'm just gonna dry brush some white paint on it, and then I think I'm gonna streak some brown on it a little bit later. But I'm just going to paint the front side because that's all that's going to be showing anyway. Once that's dry, I'm just taking my staple gun and right there 
at the top, I'm gonna to put a couple staples into the paint sticks, excuse me. And then we're gonna flatten it out just a little bit. It doesn't need to be as wide of an opening as I had it. You can also reinforce with some hot glue as well. I decided I wanted to add a little jute twine up here at the top. So I'm gonna glue it onto the back and then wrap it a few times around just to give a little bit extra um, decorative touch to it, a little bit more of that farmhouse look. And twine is going to come into play further on down the project as well. Next, I'm gonna cut three more pieces of that jute twine with the wire inside, and I'm gonna glue a piece to the back of each of my metal flowers, and I'm gonna kind of make it wavy like we did on the jute twine flowers, and then this is going to be the stem for our flower, and we're going to have the stems coming out of the metal bucket. I decided to take the truffle brown and just dot a little bit of it into the center of each of my flowers. And then I am going to add some to the metal bucket as well. And that finishes off DIY number five. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, and we'll see you next time. Take care.